First one, describe the diffraction of light at the grating. Same thing now, you describe wave go here, spread out into geometric shadow. Just go back to the old one and check it out. Um, by reference to interference, explain the zero order maximum. Hey, this is the same exact question. These three parts are the same. Wow, means very popular. Oh, they like to ask this, so you better know how to describe. Okay, you want to say zero order maximum. The light come in. All the same path difference, so all the lambda is the same. All the colors of the rainbow. So you want to describe the same way. Wave from each slit overlap or super in superpose with same path difference or you can say same phase difference. Okay, and because of that, so you can say they are uh, all constructive in the middle. Constructive or maxima at your zero order. Okay, this one is the only one mark, la, so it's a shorter one version of the previous question. Mm. First order maximum, how would you describe that? Uh, same thing, except that now you're looking at uh, first order maximum, so your colors would spread out differently. Your blue won't spread out as much, your red will spread out more. So you can say, now your wave overlap with a path difference AB. Okay. Path difference of lambda, okay, one lambda, or you can say a path dif uh, phase difference of 360. La. Okay, so for any zero order, their path difference is zero. Oh, this is two marks, I forgot to say. <laughs> this one, waves overlap, superimpose, superpose. So, N0 is lambda difference or part, uh, phase difference 0. Then if you go to the first order, N equals to 1, that means you have a path difference of 1 lambda and also a phase difference of 360 degrees, which is 1 lambda. Okay. These are your conditions for interference, guys. Must remember this. This one, B1. Then you come to this part, which is the main reason why we chose this question in the first, first place. Go graph, you know. This is what you can do in lab. So you will need to use some lab skills here. So you have a diffraction grating, different wavelengths of light. The angle is measured. So this is your dependent variable. You change the light wavelength, uh, independent. And then your angle will change or vary in response, which is why you see here they plot a graph. Lambda is on the x-axis, your independent, what you change. Theta is what you measure, so that's on the uh, results or what your results are on the y-axis. Okay, so if we go down, determine the gradient of the line. Very nice, gradient you all know how to find. Choose two points somewhere on your line uh, that you like. For me, if I look at this, I think I like this point. You check the mask scheme, they will choose a different point, that's okay. I like the corner point and I think I will choose, I like this one also eh, cross very nicely in the corners of boxes. It's just easier to read lah. Okay, you get more accurate reading. So here you need to do, what is this point here? 500 nanometer and 0 0.4. No, you need a uh, sine theta, it's just a ratio. This one will be 300, wow, my eyes, 375 nanometer. And 0 0.30. So these are your points that you're going to use to find your gradient. Gradient triangle. You should do this in lab many times. You should know how to do already. So gradient is delta y, delta x. Also we call gradient m by the way. By now k, this will be delta sine theta over delta lambda. Because that's our x-axis. So sine theta will be my values that I chose. You can choose another one. It's up to you. Okay, 500 minus 375 nanometers, so I should probably change this to meters too. Okay, so what's my gradient? I calculate everything, I should get 8.0 times 10 to the 5 meter inverse. So right here, 8 times 10 to the 5 meter inverse. This is my gradient. Now, second part. Whoa, use your gradient to calculate the slit separation D. 
Now you must use your gradient here. This is like paper three. Okay, you find a gradient, use a gradient to calculate something in an equation. But what is the equation though? Check back at this. We are plotting our y as sine and our x axis is lambda. So you need to rearrange your uh, diffraction equation. N lambda equals to D sine theta. Can we rearrange this into a form of a straight line y equals mx? Okay, so our y is sine theta, so I put that on one side. y equals to, okay, uh, our x axis is lambda, so I'm going to put lambda here. Everything else will be n over d. Okay, you see a pattern? This is our y, this is our m, this is our x. So y equals mx. Straight line graph. So if you plot the graph of sine theta against lambda, you will get the graph of Butler. A straight line. Very nice. Beautiful skills you need to use. So this is where you apply your paper tree skills. So you use the gradient to determine. You already know your gradient is... What is the gradient? Your gradient is n over d, which is this part, equals to the value you found earlier, t times 10 to the power of 5. So we need to calculate what is d. This is first order or second order. Uh, we need to know n. They got say, uh, check back. Ah uh, yes, the angle of the second order is measured. So all this angle is for n equals 2. Mm, okay, good to know. So you need to do your second order n equals 2. Uh. So everything is 2 over d equals 8 times 10 to the 5. Which means your d will be 2.5 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. That's a spacing between each, uh, this gap, la, the spacing between for your slits. Okay, so you write here 2.5, 10, negative 6. Two marks. One is if you know how to find your, 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 your equation, this one you rearrange, okay, you know how to do this, equal to gradient. That's a C1 mark and then A1 mark. So very useful for paper 3 skills, they will ask you in paper 2 one. Now the last one, on figure 5.1, sketch a line to show the results if you, you're using your first order maxima. Okay, so all this angle we measure and plot graph is for the second order. If you want to use first order, your angles is probably going to be smaller. So I'll just make a note here, first order, your angle is probably smaller la, for every single wavelength. Okay, and we are, if you're wondering why is that, that's because of our equation. Okay, n lambda equals to d sine theta. If you're, you're using a smaller order, so at first you're using 2, now you're using 1. Okay, so that's decreasing. That is related to your sine theta. So n is proportional to sine theta. Okay, um, but if you want to see how the line changes, okay, n decrease, sine theta decrease, you need to think of your gradient. What was the gradient again? n over d. Oh, let's rearrange it a bit. So n over d, I guess you put the lambda here, equals to the sine theta. So your gradient, this is your gradient. Gradient is proportional to n over d. So you can say n, la, d is not changing. Gradient is also proportional to sine theta, but I'm just going to look at this. So our n is decreasing from 2 to 1. So your gradient also is going to decrease by half long. Okay, so if you are half this, this one also become half. Makes sense, right? So you can sketch, here they say sketch. So if you roughly draw a line that is a less steep than this first line, then you are correct, already law first mark. Now this part, the maximum will say, if you draw a reasonably good line, then okay already. But what is a reasonably good line? If the examiner is strict, then they will see whether it's acceptable or not. So. Maybe it's good to also take some points, la, calculate your gradient. Okay, so if I were to do that, I would get roughly from here to this point. I didn't show the calculation. But my, my new line will be something like this. Ah, it's curved. Lines! Oh my word. Let's try this shape thing if I can do that. To here. Ah yeah, why the side here cannot line up one? Okay, I get the idea. Like, it's less steep, but also your origin is somewhere outside there. We don't know where's the origin. So you take some points on, you calculate, make sure your gradient, the ratio of change in y over change in x is half. 
okay half the gradient okay so where is my gradient 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 ah, down here okay so your new gradient was going to be half of the original of this part okay so that is how you can do your thing they see you draw gradient less steep then you say yeah okay they'll give you one mark